Wait, hi, it's, it's Rowan, and I thought I'd do us a Crazy Wisdom shopping bag video. It's gonna be real quick, because I gotta leave for the bus in about 10 minutes, so... Uh, we've got the Practical Witches Almanac, volume 22. So, this would be the 22nd year they've been doing this. I haven't seen this one before, and I know it's a little late in the year for... Um, an almanac, so let's see, we've got, uh, Danier Index. So yeah, they've got, uh, they've got these little weekly pages, so it's a little late in the year for one of these. But, it's still got a lot of interesting things in here, and I figured I'd look over it and see how it compares to the Thwethwana Almanacs. And, uh... Then, uh, we've got some, uh, Namaste Incense Cones, rose-scented, 16 pieces dupe, uh, are, I don't know how to, I can't tell if that's, uh, an O or what, E-A-C-P-O since 1932, and this is very strongly scented like rose, and, uh, oh, yes. So this is, <laughs> so let's see, and we've got some tissue paper for now. I'll pick that up when I get home. So uh, let's see, we've got these two little bells here. Uh, they were $2.50 each. Well, this one, they were marked for $2.50 each. This one I paid full price on. And this one has no clapper, so uh, I got that one for 20% off. It's not the first time I was able to uh, get something that was damaged or otherwise broken at Crazy Wisdom for a small discount. And to go on the household shrine in my kitchen, uh, since I've got all those black cats, I've been eyeing this one for a couple of months, and I'm really glad she was still there. Uh, we've got the, uh, hmm, they took the price sticker off, but this was marked for $15. They might, uh, let's see, it's marked, ooh, 2012. Okay, so I don't know if they'd be able to order a new one of this, but this is the, uh, the Mother Bast. Let's see, can we turn on the light to get a little bit more? So we've got three kittens, meow, 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 and I've got three cats. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed that, and you know, you don't often see this one, and uh, you know, this style with the uh, you know, the, the mother cat. So, uh, I figured, you know, I'm you know, my practice isn't you know, doesn't really incorporate anything Egyptian, but my uh, my shrine with all the cats, <laughs> you know, I've got all the all the various little styles of black cat statuary on there, uh, including a little you know little blind box thing. Uh, I think that that blind box series was called Tricky Cats, and I got the little Halloween uh, style one, and that was like the third one I got. So, yeah, three times a charm, just like, just like with little kittens. Little kittens. Yeah, so I'm going to put this one up on the shrine on top of the microwave. I'm also going to check and make sure I've still got that um, coupon for... Um, the, uh, the reuse center. I should still have it. Uh, it's five dollars off any purchase of ten or more. So yeah, I'm going to, uh, uh, just end and edit. I know, it's a really short one for me. Usually I go on at least ten, fifteen minutes for a lot of things. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna put this, this little lady away. And, well, that was inevitable. Um, Big yeah. Actually, that's not as much of a mess as I was afraid it was going to be. Okay. And uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel the need to. And if you do feel the need to subscribe, hit the little notification bell and all that happy horse shit. And bats and kisses, sweethearts. And I love you all so very dearly. And take care of yourselves. And goodbye. Hey, sweethearts. So, I'm adding on to this. Uh, where I thought I was done earlier today. Hold on. And, um, so I thought I was done earlier today with the, um, shopping bag 
videos that I do. I don't know. I don't like calling it a haul. It's, uh, because, I don't know. But the way it's been used with all these brand hauls, especially from Golf Tube, oh god. Um, uh, it's just, a haul reads as advertising, and I'm, I don't know, except maybe Crazy Wisdom. I'm not really intending to advertise, and the only reason, um, that would be a thing for Crazy Wisdom is because they're local to me, and I would like people who live about my area who find this due to the location setting that I give it to give them business. But, uh, so this is hair dye from Sally. Not a big deal. It's just, um, uh, and these things that are this little additive that, um, for sensitive scalps, and I've got psoriasis. So... I went to the thrift shops, and uh, I went to uh, the uh, um, Recycle Ann Arbor Reuse Center before they closed, thankfully, and I also stopped at the PTO thrift shop. So, um, PTO has two sides, um, you know, if you're in the area but you haven't been yet, um, PTO thrift shop has two sides, and PTO thrift shop directly... Um, uh, benefits like they're a charity um, shop and they directly benefit the local school district um, and um, so it's good to shop there um, unlike Salvation Army who you know likes to fund homophobic bullshit so uh, they've got two sides one side is their showcase side I think I've mentioned this before on my you know thrift shop videos and, uh, so one side is their showcase side where they've got, like, antiques and high-end camera equipment and shit. And I need to give the rest of that almond bark to, um, my friend Willow because I made that with, um, this big-ass block of... It wasn't real white chocolate. It was vanilla-flavored, um, solid, um, I don't know. It was probably some solids in there, but I don't think it was enough to call it like real white chocolate. It was definitely vanilla flavored, uh, but I couldn't have it due to soy content, and I'm just like, okay, this can't be returned to a store. I mean, I could take it back, you know, the next time I'm in there, or I could just make almond bark for my friends for um, Christmas or something, so I've got a shit ton of leftover almond bark. Uh, so, uh, for 50 cents each, except for the two... Yeah, these... No, this one was a dollar, and there's another one that was a dollar. No, just that one. Okay, I must not have gotten the other one that was a dollar. We've got my little um, cooking booklets. So I've got um, home canning and freezer guide. Uh, and you can use pressure cookers for canning, and I've got two pressure cookers. I'm thinking of... Um, selling or donating one of them. The one that isn't red, in part because my kitchen is done in red, um, my front room's done in blue, uh, except for the couch, but I need to reupholster the couch anyway, but that's a long story. Uh, and my bedroom is done in black and purple. Um, but yeah, like, the, the, um, the brushed aluminium one, I need to either sell or donate that, uh, but, uh, I'm not keeping the red one just because it goes with my kitchen, though that is a bonus, but because um, it said to, you know, the instructor said to turn your um, thing to as high a setting, and stupid me, I forget that this stove is really touchy, even for an electric, especially for an electric. Like, if I turn it to its absolute highest setting, uh, shit will catch fire. And it's not just because, you know, there's some residual grease on the burners due to my cast iron... Um, cookware. It's like, no, like, little fires will just shoot up if it's too hot, so, um, so yeah, there's like a big scorch mark on the, on the red enamel one. I don't even know if I can completely clean that off. I seem to make a tiny bit of progress every time, but, you know, it's mine. I'd feel bad trying to sell it, and I wouldn't feel greatest if, you know, I couldn't sell it and had to donate it, so I'm like, you know, it's mine, it's mine. I've definitely left my mark on it, because I was a dumbass. Uh, but, uh, let's see, we've got pet non-fat dry milk recipes. I've actually got two of these. So there's this one, and I use dry milk. Why? Because my father was born in 1942. He had two sisters who remembered the Depression. This was a thing people used, and some old people still use it because they still make it. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, new recipes by Mary Lee Taylor, whoever the hell she is. Oh, this other one is by Mary Lee Taylor. So we've got pet non-fat dry milk recipes by Mary Lee Taylor and new recipes by Mary Lee Taylor using instant pet non-fat dry milk. I don't know why it's showed in a jar here. I get it in a... Well, it, Kuroger used to do their home brand in a box, but now it's in a big-ass bag, which I feel a little bad about through the plastic use, but it's like... It's twice the size of the big ass boxes, so I'm like, eh, six of one half dozen of the other, maybe. Um, so then there's this one, ball canning and freezing recipes, which I'll probably use at least a few of them. Uh, so this isn't related to, so I do have one of these, um, it's not this brand, but I do have an electric skillet. Um, mine is not a Dormeyer. Mine is a General Electric, but this is a recipe book for an electric skillet. And I have another recipe book for an electric skillet, though that's a GE one. <laughs> um, if there's too much duplicated in this one, I think I might put it up on eBay. There's actually, like, um, apparently there's a bunch of antique appliance enthusiasts, because I have gotten into bidding wars with people on eBay over some stuff. Like, I... I'm broke, so I know not to go too crazy on those bidding wars, but it's like, I, I was not aware that there's other antique appliance enthusiasts. So, again, I've got a blender that's a similar uh, style, but I, I think mine is an old Sunbeam from the late 60s, early 70s, maybe. Uh, this one is a Warring. Yeah, yeah, for the new Warring blender. 340 blender recipes. And I'm going to use these. Oh, God. The, oh, God. The, um... The, uh, the art in here. Oh, how good am I at this? I'm guessing early 60s from the art. Oh, I was way off. 1947. I was, I was so off. <laughs> okay, and here's my... So these, um, 317 for all of these that I'm sure if I was going to sell any one of them, I could probably get at least double, um... Well, not double the full price. Oh, I'm going to get to this in a minute. Though you've probably already guessed if you know what kitchen appliances look like. So, um... Ooh. I have a bit of a problem with these, um, vintage carafes. This is definitely an older one. Um, country style quality established 1899. It's not that old. So if it's saying established 19 or 1899, we're, uh, we're looking at, I don't know, it wouldn't be any older than the 40s is my guess. Um, it's probably a bit newer. I'm probably looking at the font, I'd say 60s, maybe 70s. Um, I seem to have that superpower with my, um, uh, with the short films that I, um, sort out. I don't know if you've seen any of my YouTube playlists, like 1920s shorts, 1940s shorts, 1980s shorts, something like, and, and you know, I do all, like, 20th century decades. But yeah, from, like, uh, the Jeff Quitney and Old Time TV channels. So I sort them by decade, though I'm, you know, they've got their own playlists for these, but, you know, like, I compile them. And I love watching these, but they don't always put the year in the titles. And I discovered recently, um, and I announced it to my Facebook friends, that I seem to have this superpower with being able to guess um, within about two, three years uh, <laughs> that one of these short films has been made by the font they use in the opening credits and all of that. So I finally got some wine stems. I think these are more intended for white wine. Um, just looking at the way that it's designed. Uh, uh, red wines usually have a bit of a fuller base on them, whereas uh, white wine um, are going to want it, you know, they want you to hold it by the stem to, um, you know, with most white wines. Whereas most red wines, they want you to hold it like this. So red wines usually have a little bit of a shorter stem, and it's usually... Um, part of the uh, blown glass itself. Of course, this could also depend on the brand. These could just be made, meant to be generic wine stems, but I noticed I have... <sighs> Let's see, I posted to Instagram a couple weeks ago. 
Uh, I thought I had four, but no, I have five sets of liqueur stems. <laughs> you know, so like little shot glasses on a stem. I have five sets of liqueur stems and not a single set of wine stems. And I love red wine, and I'm wondering how the hell I did this. So, um, I am actually going to be listing probably on Artfire, though I may go with Ruby Lane just because there are a lot of more um, uh, antique and vintage uh, sellers on there, whereas um, Artfire, what well, they do do um, vintage as well, like Etsy, um, Artfire does, like they do have a vintage category, but um, when, I, when I do searches for vintage on Artfire, it's usually clothes and jewelry, um, and not so much housewares, and long story short, I'm not going back to Etsy. Um, so I'm probably going to go with Ruby Lane, because, um, you know, liqueur stems, that's housewares, and I do see more of that on Ruby Lane. So I'm just going to, you know, like I said, uh, there we go, I'm an owl, play with your newspaper. I don't know if I've mentioned it too much on my channel before. Uh, I don't think I've mentioned it recently. My stepmother um, and her first husband... Uh, her first husband dealt antiques on the side, like my father dealt junk on the side. Like, if you've seen Fred uh, Sanford and Son or in the UK, since I do seem to have a s steady amount of uh, UK and Australian viewers, and I think part of that might be my accent. Uh, but, yeah, um, or maybe just, you know, being part of a golf tube. Uh, but, yeah, uh, so, uh, the, the British original would be Steptoe and Son. But, yeah, if you've seen either Sanford and Son or Steptoe and Son, um, they're, the premise is identical, basically. Um, yeah, that's what my dad did. Uh, so, um, I've got service of five for my wine stems. Uh, yeah, looking at the design, my guess is, you know, these were probably intended to be white wine, but they've got just full enough at the base, you know, I'm like, I can use them either way. Um, I drink more red wine, but those were the style that I liked the best. A lot of the ones with the fuller base that, you know, with the fuller base and a shorter stem, which, you know, are, you know, ideal for reds. Most of the ones I was seeing was that goddamn cut glass, you know, snowflake kind of shit from the 70s through early 80s, I want to say. And, like, my grandmother had those. And while I, uh, initially it was unintended, uh, was doing my kitchen in red, white, and black. And the story of that is my grandmother used to work for Coca-Cola. This is the same grandmother because I only knew the one because the other one died when I was, like, three or four. Um, yeah, my paternal grandfather, the only memories I really have of her, or at least of being at her house, was I was playing with her cancer wigs, I was like three years old, and, um, my father and my Aunt Judy were arguing about some shit, and I know after she died, those two stopped talking. <laughs> um, we're pretty sure she did show up to his memorial service, but there was... No confirmation, but yeah, my uh, my dad's sister Karen was <laughs> very certain it was indeed Judy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my aunt Karen took a uh, took dad's side in whatever argument after their mother died. So, um, so I do have a battery charger, but this accommodates other battery sizes. And while I usually only see the double uh, A AA and triple A rechargeables at the stores here, I can get the other sizes online. Um, so, I'm probably going to, uh, clean up my other battery charger. It's got some crud on it. I really need to do that, uh, take care of that. Um, so I'm probably gonna clean that up, um, see if I can put it up on Craigslist for a few bucks for somebody. I know brand new it would be, like, 10 or 15. Um, it is an older charger, though, but, you know, everybody needs a battery charger. Uh, they've also, at PTO, they've got a bunch of really, uh, they've got a bunch of remnants, so I picked up this. This is faux suede. I'm not completely sure what I'm going to do with it. I might just make, you know, a cushion for my chair, like a new cushion for it, or maybe a collar 
for it. <laughs> like, uh, I've got some other material that I want to make a, um, a pillowcase for it. Um, but I can always make two, right? And when I was playing with the newspaper. I also, it was pink and blue day at the PTO thrift shop, so um, clothing with a pink or a blue tag uh, was 50% off. And I do love my skirts. I do love just wearing a skirt with a jacket. And Murnau loves newspapers. And the last thing that I got at PTO, besides newspaper for kitties, newspaper for kitty, he's the only one playing with it. Right now, anyway. Ooh. Oh. Is it? Oh, God, that was, that was a mess. So, uh, uh, the one last thing I got at PTO is a, uh, CD carousel for my stereo. I had a CD um, carousel on it before as a component because oh, my stereo, I've had that since 1987. <laughs> uh, I've had it since 1987 because uh, while I was indeed like six, seven years old, uh, my eldest sister bought it and then she got married and moved to England and figured um, it would just be easier and maybe a little cheaper to just get herself a new stereo in England than have this one converted for um, their power and sockets and all that. So I've had the same stereo since 1987 and one of my exes is kind of personally offended by this idea. I don't know why he even acknowledges that it's irrational. Um, but his, you know, justification, but, you know, he, uh, he rationalizes it as, say, I like, yeah, he knows it's irrational, but at the same time, like, his reasoning is like, you know, he's like, well, it's just so old, you can get a new one, maybe a better one, and, you know, for maybe a hundred dollars, I'm like, no, you can get a cheap one for maybe a hundred dollars, you know, at, like, Bed Bath and & Beyond and shit, and I'm like, no, not, not with a record player, um, tape deck, and CD, especially when I can get a new CD carousel like this one. Yeah, the other one, the, uh, I think the lasers died, so this one says it has been tested and works properly, and if it does not hold true, I have, uh, I think about a week to take it back to PTO and say, hey, it was a dud. I am going to have to find my, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the red and white audio cables. I forget what they're called. Uh, RCA are the ones with the yellow, but I'm gonna have to find, um, red and white cables for that one to, uh, plug it in, but those are fairly inexpensive. I can probably go down to, uh, Jefferson Computers tomorrow or something and, uh, get new or gently used red and white cables and test this thing out and mm. but the big thing that I'm very excited about so yesterday's live stream and plus uh, I think the most recent uh, food pantry um, haul that I did I don't know why I call those a haul but when it's you know housewares and shit it's a shopping bag video kitty please get off of that um, I mentioned that I have not had a working microwave since about July, so this one, I dumpster dived it uh, December, maybe November, no, no later than December, because I know it was like, uh, yeah, my old microwave, which is still with us because I don't want to have to dismantle the household shrine just to have to reassemble it. Uh, you know, just to reassemble it and put it on the shelf and then get a new microwave. So I have to disassemble it and reassemble it again. So I'm saving myself like two chores by waiting until I have a working one that definitely works. So I'm going to test this in a bit. Ha! Ah, it turns on. I did uh, test it at their um, power strip at the reuse center um, on industrial, which is like a few doors down from PTO, so it's a completely different thrift shop. This one is part of the recycling station. So, um, so yeah, this, it turns on, the, um, the motor seems to work. Uh, I did take out the, uh, the plate and little, um, spinny thing from the carousel to, um, 
you know, just basically to protect it in my shopping cart on the way back home. Um, so yeah, I'm going to plug this, um, well first I'm going to move some shit off my uh, counter by the sink, and then I'm going to plug this in and try and make something hot, and if it does not cook, then I guess I can go back and take it back tomorrow. If it does cook, I've got a working microwave again, and I can disassemble the shrine and everything. So, you know what? I think you're going to test it with me. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. to test this, let's take some Dynasty Siphon Noodles, put it in a soup cup, put the thing aside here, and now, in my beautiful cleaned out fridge, we've got some homemade vegetable broth in an old sour cream container, and which one of these is opened? Ice cream can go there, and there we go, stir fry blend of vegetables. So let us, mm. oh god, you should smell this. This smells amazing. And I made it in my slow cooker. So yeah, a little bit of broth. Okay, there's a couple vegetables. Yeah, I know, there's a mess on top of my stove. Okay, now let's see. I clamp this all together. Open up. Say, ah. Oh. Get it centered there. Now let's see. Usually about 90 seconds will do me. Um. Okay, cook time, start, it appears to be cooking, if you're actually enjoying this, you're about as weird as I thought, like for some reason the second most viewed video in the last uh, 28 days, according to my YouTube analytics, has been me making meatballs, that live meat vlogging video. Like, why do people want to watch me make meatballs? Watch a fat little gay boy making meatballs. I don't get it. You people are weird. And numbers one and three of my most watched were the, uh, were the food pantry, um, unboxing haul sort of things. I think I usually do more than 90 seconds. This is how long I've been without a micro, well, without a working microwave. But 90 seconds, it should, um, it should at least be tepid, the water. Because this, oh yeah, that is cold. And it's tasty. Yeah. So yeah, this is just vegetable broth made from bits of vegetables that were starting to turn on me. Or just like, you know, the ends of from cutting mushrooms and shit. Okay. Shut up. Oh, we have steam on top. Oh my gosh, I've got a working microwave. Did that cook it enough? No, it did not. So, okay, I'll probably have to do another minute. I'm not sure what wattage this is. This doesn't say. The other one said. I haven't been able to find where the wattage is on this, but... Um, okay, and I'm going to finish cooking this and then dismantle this shit back here. That shit. And, um, yeah. Dismantle the shrine, take down the microwave... Put it back to the dumpster from whence it came. Circle of microwave. But now, let's do, let's do another 90 seconds just to make sure it's cooked. <laughs> but no, I'm not gonna like film this again, but 
Yay! Working microwave. Yeah, I've got a working microwave for the first time since July. Yeah, this uh, this old one. So I found it out by the dumpster um, when I was still seeing Calvin uh, a few years ago. Uh, yeah, that was like <sighs> November, December of 2015 through like January or so of uh, 2016. Um, yeah, and um, he helped me bring it upstairs. It was out by the dumpster and I figured, you know what, worst case, you know, because uh, there was a mild rain that day. So I'm like, okay, let's let it dry out for a couple days and then I can test it. And if it works, great. I've got a working microwave. If it does not, take it back down to the dumpster. So yeah, I had this, uh, like I said, I want to say December 2015 through July 2018. So yeah, a little over two and a half years. Oh my gosh. The, uh, it looks like, what the hell? Please, um, Oh dear, there's something going on outside. At first I thought it was my, uh, my, uh, the porch light on my balcony, but, um, no, this is definitely flashing beyond that. Let's be nosy neighbors. Oh, no, I think it's a tow truck. I think somebody's parked in the lot without a permit. Yeah, that's what's going on. Never mind. Nothing to see here. Just, uh, yeah, uh, well, it's white light, so I knew it wasn't pigs, but, um, but yay, I've got another working, I've got a new working microwave, but yeah, two and a half years, that's not bad for a dumpster dived microwave, uh, but yeah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I had a free dumpster dived microwave for a little over two and a half years, and then this last July 2018, it just started making sparks. At first I thought it was the glass I was trying to melt butter in. Like maybe it was an older leaded glass because I've got antiques and, um, and vintage and not all of them are microwave safe. So I thought, okay, I can take it out and try it in something that I know for a fact is microwave safe. If only because it has that printed on the bottom. Uh, but yeah, then I tried it again and it did the same thing. And then I tried to heat up something just sitting on a paper towel. So it's not even on a plate or a dish or anything, and it still makes sparks. So uh, that's about the time when you realize that your microwave is dead. And, like, it would go and make sparks, and it wouldn't even heat shit up anymore. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have another working microwave again. And I got it at the uh, Ann Arbor, uh, the Recycle Ann Arbor Reuse Center, and because, oh, this sets a reminder beep. Oh my God, that's amazing. It has been, oh my gosh, my stepmother had a microwave with a reminder beep, and it had the, it did the reminder beep. Oh my gosh, that is, and see, she got it because, um, you know, just, I don't think she got that intentionally. It just kind of happened. You know, that that was the one that was, like, on sale that day or something. But, yeah, it's been... So, yeah, I haven't lived with a microwave with a reminder beep. And that is useful. That is useful because with my um, ADHD, I, I do, I've done this so many times. Just, like, walked away from something. That's why <laughs> I have an antique toaster with the, with the sides. Um, and it does work. But, uh, but, yeah, you can't walk away from it when you're making toast. On the good side, you know, that means I don't end up with cold toast half an hour later. Unfortunately, if I do walk away from it, shit's going to set on fire. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, yeah, it's, that's taught me not to walk away from my toast, so, um, that's a good thing. It's, but yeah, oh my gosh, it's got a reminder beep, which is nice. Great for us people who are easily distracted. So, yeah, I'm going to have my steaming hot vegetable soup that I made in my, um, God, I love these, I love these cups, I do, because I, all I need is just like, you know, a thing of, um, you know, noodles like this, and, um, they're like two dollars at Kroger for, uh, because I can't have the ramen bricks, I can't have the, like, 25 cent for a thing ramen bricks anymore, so, um, so yeah, like, this is how I make, um, my noodle cups now is like I use those things of noodles and homemade broth more often than not. Um, 
and just a handful of whatever vegetables I have in the freezer. And it's so great. And I guess that's it. I'm going on a lot longer than I'd intended to. But, uh, <laughs> yay, working microwave. So excited. So excited. Nobody should be this excited about household appliances. It <laughs> really should not be a thing. But it is. Oh, right. Yeah, so I got it at the, uh, at the, um, Recycle Ann Arbor Reuse Center. And so I had a coupon for $5 off a purchase of $10 or more. And this was, uh, $12.50. I was told, twelve fifty. It didn't have a tag on it, so I asked somebody who worked there, who looked like he knew what he was doing, and he said twelve fifty. But I also had a coupon, and so it was like seven fifty with the five dollars off. So I have, ah, oh, I have a working microwave, and I didn't even pay a full ten dollars for it. <laughs> and I love it, and I love it. And it's got a reminder beep, and it's so amazing. But yeah, the reason I had that coupon is because Ypsilanti. Uh, we don't have recycling uh, drop-off service for our recycling anymore. And my building does not have a separate dumpster for single-stream recycling. So, uh, what that means is um, there was some kind of technicality because the recycling drop-off station, which wasn't even a proper recycling station, it was just the drop-off station. And it would all go single-stream into this goddamn truck and then go off to the actual recycling center. So, uh, so yeah, like, our consolation for the next couple years, um, until, uh, December 2020, I believe, is what the date on my card is. So I've got this pass, which says that I'm an Ypsilanti resident, and, um, I have a free pass to, um, take in my recycling, um, without, you know, for no charge, because otherwise they'll, like, charge you by, I don't know, I don't know. I guess they charge you if you're from outside the uh, service area. So, yeah. But, yeah, I've got a... Uh, so, you know, along with that card, they also sent, like, some coupons, which included $5 off a uh, $10 plus purchase at the uh, Reuse Center, where, you know, they've got great appliances. And that's where I got my couch. That's my $50 antique couch. Um, this couch is, like, 120 years old. It's... <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, God. Probably older than that. I think uh, my friend... Ah, uh, shit. I know his wife's name is Alice. Joey! Joey! Yeah, Joey and Alice. Yeah, that's, I remembered his name. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, he, um, he restores antique furniture, and, um, you know, that's, like, his trade. Um, he kind of does it freelance now, uh, due to disability, and, you know, uh, but, um, but yeah, um, yeah, he, uh, I had guessed it. Um, as a 1920s, maybe early 30s, and he says, no, this is an Empire Victorian style, so, um, would be as late as 1910, but probably closer to 1890, um, for this style. It was reupholstered in the 30s, you got that right? Because <laughs> I was only guessing, like, based on the fact that it looks like it could be a deco style, just like, um... Uh, but, uh, but I was also guessing from the, uh, the pile of the velvet on the upholstery. So yeah, he says it was probably reupholstered in the 30s, um, if the pile is indeed that old. Um, but yeah, I guessed it as, um, as, like, mid-period deco, and he says, no, it's, it's definitely older. So yeah, and I got it for $50 from, uh, from the reuse center, because... Uh, it was half off all the furniture in the back room that day, and so it was marked for 100, and so I got it for 50, and, um, delivery from the reuse center, uh, cause yeah, they had a couple guys, uh, deliver it for me for only $25, so this is my $75 antique couch after delivery service, but yeah, I'm gonna let you go, I got, uh, yeah, there's a couple other coupons in there, like, uh, free up to 10 pounds, like, document shredding, shit like that, things I don't think I'm going to use, but, you know, I'll keep it around, uh, for a bit, see if I do use them. So yeah, I guess I can, I'm gonna let you go now so I can edit this all down and all that. <gasps> Yay! Okay, this working microwave, working microwave! Bats and kisses, sweethearts, and no, I'm not gonna be able to go and use that coupon for cat food today, but uh, oh well, oh well. Oh, hi, I'm gonna take away his tail until he knows how to use it responsibly. All he does with it 
is like hit me in the face with it. But um, no, I'm not going to. I love his tail. It's so fluffy and squirrely. Yes. Say goodbye, Murnau. Say bye to the people, Murnau. No? Okay. Okay. So, bats and kisses and spank your kitties for me. And I love you all so much, dears. So, take care of yourselves and goodbye.